Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Word Tutorials Only. In yesterday's video, I showed you how to use Chat GPT to generate a glossary for your Microsoft Word document. Now we will format that document because it looks plain and it's not very straightforward. It doesn't really stand out at you. I post Microsoft Word tutorials here each and every day and that is all this channel is dedicated to. So if this is something that suits you, Feel free in subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell so that every time I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. Now we want our glossary on a separate page. I will do a page break at the end here of the glossary and everything that I speak about, if you're not familiar with like page breaking or any other things or formatting styles in Microsoft Word that you're not familiar with, I will put everything in the cards section up above so that you could refer back to those videos in case you don't know how to do those things. So I'm going to go up to insert on the ribbon menu and I'll come down to page break. I broke the page and now our glossary is on a page by itself. Now our glossary is the heading. We want to take the colon out of that so we're going to backspace. When you backspace, of course, you're going to ensure that your cursor is in front of, or I should say in the back of whatever you want to take off, and then you hit backspace on your keyboard. Now we're going to select the glossary, or select the word glossary, and we are going to go to home, and we're going to center that here. No, it's very small and it looks kind of plain. So we'll stay in the home tab and we're going to go over to our styles menu and we'll see what we could choose here. Um, let me just scroll on a bit to see what's this. So I'm going to use intense quote for the glossary. It's a bit small. I want it to be a larger and maybe all caps. So I'll come back up to the ribbon menu. We're still in the home tab. And I'm going to press, um, I'll come here and I'll press uppercase. I want it to be all caps and I want it to be a bit larger. Maybe 18. I'm going to come down to the glossary itself. And I want all the, what would you say, the colons to come out of each sentence. So the first definition that we have is third world country. And I'll put the cursor in between country and the colon. And on the keyboard, I'm going to tab it out once. Once is sufficient, maybe. Maybe twice. No. Backspace, maybe once. And then... I will come down to the sentence that has not been tabbed and I'll tab it. Let me just undo that. And I'll tab it until it's under the colon. Now I said I wanted to take out the colon. So let's put the cursor to the front of letter A but the back of colon and we're going to backspace twice. Then to make third world country as a definition stand out some more i'm just going to select that and i'm going to go back up to the style section and i'm going to choose a style for that i'll use intense emphasis and for the definition i'm going to choose a style for that by selecting it going back up to the style section and i'll choose I'll choose strong. Now I'm just going to go through the rest of my definitions and I'm going to format it into position the way that I did for the first definition. Now let's say for example, we have tabbed out the word money borrowed from lender and then we're going to come to the second line to tab out full at a later date and let's tab and tab and we see that everything in the first line is moving. That happens a lot. Don't worry about that. All we need to do is take our mouse cursor. We're going to click on the first sentence where we want our definition to begin. And we just backspace. And then we come back down to full at a later date. And then we tab it in. 
and then we come back to money and we backspace until it lines up itself now this is just the manual way of doing it if you look up here to your ruler section these indents here controls all of that but this is not an indentation tutorial so i just did it manually for those who are not as advanced in indentations now that we have all our definitions positioned in alignment or in the in the positioning that we want it to be in i'll go through and i'll add or apply the formatting styles to the rest of the glossary applying our styles to our glossary by formatting it with the boldness the fonts the size and so forth has been completed in tomorrow's video i'm going to show you how to alphabetize your glossary so ensure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you could see that video as long as i upload it you'll get a notification also my goal for february guys is to get to 1000 subscribers you subscribing to the channel you will be very helpful in helping me to achieve that goal and ensure you hit the notification bell for daily uploads i'll see you in tomorrow's video